Boom! What's going on, everyone? I am Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and this is Toy Talk. In my last video, I talked about some extreme all-terrain off-road vehicles for my next video. And every week, I bring out new videos on die-cast models, resin models, the real vehicles, and their manufacturers. So go on and hit that red subscribe button and ring the bell next to it in order to get notified of all of my future videos. These vehicles in front of me, I bet you're wondering what they are. Well, the launch of Sputnik 1 on October 4th, 1957, began the race to space between the Americans and the Russians. The Americans decided to bring back their manned spacecraft by splashing the craft down into the sea, while the Russians decided to bring back their manned craft by a hard landing on dry land. Each country had to retrieve their men and their spacecrafts. As such, the use of military-grade hardware became a common occurrence in these endeavors. America used air-sea rescue and recovery vehicles, while the Russians had to develop air-land rescue and recovery vehicles. In the 1960s, the Soviet space program developed the Soyuz series of spacecraft. Part of the capsule's design was to provide for the occupants and cargo to have as much internal space as possible, which resulted in a spherical design. Therefore, the capsule's shape offered virtually no control over trajectory once re-entry into Earth's atmosphere had begun. That meant that where the capsule would land was really anyone's guess. The use of air support and ground recovery and rescue vehicles was required. This video is going to focus on the development of Russia's extreme all-terrain vehicles for land. The Zil Pu-1, the Zil Pu-2, and the Zil Bluebird 4906 family of vehicles. In the early 1970s, development began on a search and rescue vehicle that could handle the extreme climates of Siberia, wade through numerous bodies of water and marshlands, and collect both cargo and personnel. The Zil Pu-1 and Zil Pu-2 proved to be too large and heavy to be transported by aircraft to these remote locations. The size, it simply was too big to fit in a cargo transport plane of the time. Also, at 11 feet wide, it was too wide to drive on any of the roads without requiring special permits. This led to the development of the Zill 4906 and the 49061 variants. The Zill 4906 was lighter and slightly smaller than its predecessor. This is because it had to meet the design requirement of fitting in a cargo transport plane of the time period and also being able to drive on the normal roads without requiring special permits. Featuring a sealed fiberglass hull and a twin propeller system to provide for amphibious capabilities. The two propellers installed at the rear of the craft offered propulsion in water with a maximum speed of 9 miles per hour. Despite the Zill 4906 offering excellent off-road and cargo hauling capabilities, three vehicles were actually needed. One to handle the recovered Soyuz crew and provide living quarters for medical personnel and support crew. It also carried communications equipment, navigation, and equipment for medical purposes. The other two Zill 4906 vehicles were set up as cargo haulers. They were equipped with a crane to lift the recovered Soyuz spacecraft onto one of the cargo haulers, and they were designed to haul the Zill 2906 on the other cargo transport. To go the final mile, the Zill 2906 screw drive machine was developed. 
and here it is. Isn't that machine cool? It was very similar to a 1929 Fordson screw drive tractor and one that was developed by the Chrysler Corporation in 1964 for the American Department of the Defense. The Zill 2906 screw drive machine could go virtually anywhere. Featuring a pair of cylindrical screws installed underneath the vehicle. The twisting motion of the threads on the screws would push the 2906 through almost anything. This machine gave the search and rescue team that last mile capability to reach the cosmonauts that was not possible with the Zill 4906 vehicles. They were extreme off-road vehicles and they could go almost anywhere, but there were places they couldn't go, but there were almost no place that this little guy couldn't. The rear of the 2906 had space allotted for two stretchers as well as additional seating for medical personnel. The Zill 2906 also carried specialized equipment for communications and navigation. Like the Zill 4906, the 2906 and the 29061 had cargo carrying capabilities. After all, they had to bring that Soyuz back to the main Zill 4906. Given the extremes of Siberia, it's fairly likely that most Russian cosmonauts were welcomed back to Earth by a Zill 2906 crew. All of the Zill retrieval vehicles were given the nickname Bluebird, probably because of the blue color that they were painted. The Zill 4906s were six-wheel drive vehicles capable of reaching a top speed of 50 miles per hour on land and a maximum on the water of nine miles per hour. They were powered by either a Zill 645 diesel V8 engine or a Zill 130 gasoline V8 engine. The Zill 645 diesel had about 185 horsepower, while the Zill 130 gasoline engine had about 150 horsepower. Zill 4906 and 4906 1s weighed in at about 9 to 10 and a half tons each. They were 30 feet long, 8 feet wide, and roughly 10 feet tall. This was the design requirement that was needed to fit inside the cargo transport planes of the time period. Also, it was so that they could drive them down the highways without requiring special permits. For crew and passengers comfort, riding inside the Zill 4906 and 49061, they were riding on independent lever torsion bar suspensions, which gave a decent ride for the time. As a footnote about the Zill factory, Zill stands for Zavod Emini Lachavavit. It was founded in Moscow, Russia in the year 1916, two years before the Bolshevik Revolution of 1918 that brought the Soviets to power in Russia. It was in the automotive and defense industry producing luxury automobiles, limousines for party members, heavy road vehicles, semi-trucks for goods, extreme all-terrain vehicles, and military vehicles for the Red Army. Production ended in 2012 when the company was declared bankrupt. Now, a little bit more about these vehicles in front of me. They were produced by DIP Models. And DIP Models was founded in St. Petersburg, Russia. And they wanted to make the vehicles of the former Soviet Union and current day Russian vehicles, models of these vehicles. They produce all of their vehicles in 143rd scale and they have produced them all in resin. One of the neatest sets of vehicles they came out with was the Bluebird family of vehicles. They started out with the car personnel transporter, which includes the detailed interior and medical facilities. Then they came out with the cargo transporter, the 4906. And to have this set correct, you need to have two of these. One to carry back your retrieved Soyuz capsule 
and one to carry out and back your Zill 2906. The cargo transporters come with a crane system that's all folded up. They also come with a cradle for the Soyuz capsule and the cradle for the Zill 2906. DIP also made a crane feature that you could take these parts off and put on so that you could simulate lifting the Soyuz capsule up onto the transport vehicle. The next vehicle they made was the Zill 2906 screw drive machine. And they thought it will fit inside the cargo area and ride on top of the Zill 4906. And last, they made two different versions of the Soyuz capsule. They made this orange version here, which denotes that it's a trainer. It was used to train the crews on how to load the Soyuz capsule onto the cargo transporter. They also made a charred version. When the spacecraft comes into the Earth's atmosphere, it is creating tremendous amounts of heat and flame, which chars the sides of the craft. So when these vehicles actually are out in the field picking them up, they're picking up a charred version. And DIP also made a charred version. DIP made their models in 143rd scale. And 143rd is the most prominent scale in Europe and in Asia for models. In America, we have other scales. And I've created a report on all the most popular scales of model cars and trucks. Go on and grab your free copy at the link in the description below. And as always, please like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified of all of my future videos. And please go on and share this video with your friends on your social media. Thanks for watching. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is Toy Talk.